There's a million videos and recipes on cacio e pepe, but instead of just adding another one to the list, I'm gonna show you how to break down cacio e pepe into basic cooking components, which will allow you to transform those variables into any cuisine that you want. For me, I decided to make a completely unauthentic Tex-Mex inspired version. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. So for me, cooking is most fun when we stop following step-by-step -step recipes with exact ingredients, but instead start to understand some of those basic components of what makes up a recipe, and then be able to adapt them and create dishes on a whim. So what we're gonna do in this video is actually break down cacio e pepe into kind of its just basic cooking components, and then make this new kind of Tex-Mex Cacio e pepe. I don't know. I've never actually tried it before. We'll taste test it at the end. It could be awful, but I don't think it'll be that bad. Anyway, let's dive into the video. Typical cacio e pepe preparations are made with a pasta such as spaghetti. A sauce is made with starchy pasta water and pecorino romano cheese. And then black peppercorns are used for flavoring. However, if we look past the recipe and just break down cacio e pepe into basic cooking components, this is what it looks like. Component one is a pasta or noodle. Component two is a starchy water and cheese emulsion. And then component three is just a flavoring ingredient. These components are now variables for you to play with. Maybe a Spanish cuisine inspired version is something like fideo cut pasto, queso zamorano, paprika and saffron. Maybe an Indian cuisine inspired version is penne, kalimpong cheese, turmeric, mustard seed, and chili powder. Some combinations are obviously gonna work better than others, but that's part of the fun. For the Tex-Mex version that I made, I decided to stick with typical spaghetti for component one. In component two, I used a mix of cotija and Mexican manchego. And then for the flavoring component, I used fresh Fresno pepper and some toasted human seeds. So let's give this thing a try and see how it tastes at the end. To start, set a pan over medium heat and toast the cumin seeds until they are fragrant, probably about one to two minutes. Then transfer these to a mortar and pestle and lightly bash them up and set them aside. Then in the same pan, add 100 grams of pasta and fill water to just submerge the pasta. No extra is necessary. This is going to create an extra starchy environment, which helps for our sauce. Also, if you are wondering why these spaghetti fit so nicely, I actually snipped the ends off Normally I would just use my larger pan, but it's not good for the sick camera angles, so I went for the snip this time. Anyway, add a nice pinch of salt and stir for the first minute or so to avoid sticking, and then once the pasta starts simmering, set a timer for eight minutes so it will be slightly underdone. Then make sure you stir this occasionally while you are prepping the other ingredients. Meanwhile, back at the prep table, grate 25 grams of cotija cheese and 25 grams of Mexican manchego and combine them into a bowl. Also, Mexican manchego is much different than typical Spanish manchego that you probably see in the grocery store. That is a hard aged cheese instead of the soft melting one that is used in my beloved poblano con queso tacos. And a good substitute to Mexican manchego would be some Monterey Jack cheese. Lastly, finally dice up a Fresno chili pepper, which will provide a nice level of spice, nothing too overbearing. Then you're going to add that diced up Fresno pepper with the toasted cumin seeds to the bowl of cheese. Once the timer is up on the pasta, instead of draining the pasta water, we're actually just gonna pour some of that right into the cheese mixture bit by bit and stir until we have a cohesive cheese sauce. Now, if you still have a lot of water in the pan, you can drain it off in the sink, but leave a little in and just pour the cheese sauce over the top of the pasta and stir and toss the pasta until it is well coated. Add that pasta to a bowl, maybe a little more cotija on top, maybe some cilantro or something, and there you have it. Cacio e pepe, except with Tex-Mex ingredients. Let's do our taste test. All right, everybody, let's give this kind of Tex-Mex-ish Mexican cacio e pepe a try. It's just flat out delicious. I mean, it's got all those kind of textural qualities of cacio e pepe with the 
the al dente pasta, the creaminess from that starchy, cheesy emulsion. But then the peppers really provide this whole new experience with, um, you know, it's a little spicy from the Fresnos and then having those toasted cumin seeds throughout the dish, that's really, really good. And then the, it's a nice balance between the Manchego and the Cotija. Um, not quite the same um, sauce consistency as maybe a Pecorino Romano, but I mean, that's to be expected when you're just experimenting with things. If you like kind of little spicy, a little bit spicy like pastas, you're gonna absolutely love this. And this is what I was saying, like this, this for me is when cooking gets fun. Like this is a great dish. I mean, to my knowledge, it's never been made before. And you know, it's, it's kind of cool because if you think about it, that's how a lot of cooking is. Like the, uh, the Al Pastor taco in Mexico, for example, a hundred years ago, that wasn't even around. Like it, now it's known as like this staple of kind of Mexican cuisine, but a hundred years ago, it wasn't around. You know, it was brought by Lebanese immigrants, I believe, um, and kind of transformed from the shawarma into Al Pastor tacos. So it's kind of cool things like that when you just take those basic underlying techniques, for example, like this cacho e pepe, and then apply new ingredients to it. It's, you know, for me, it's when cooking really gets a lot of fun. So hopefully you learned a little something from this video. Um, whether you try this dish, which will be up on my website, so you guys can follow the recipe if you do want to follow, you know, my version exactly, or, you know, make some, make some new riffs on this dish. I would love to see it. Send them to me on Instagram. Uh, but that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned a little something. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.